Hello, this is Carla from McNeil Europe Tech Support and Training. This video is a fast tour through what's new in Rhino 6 for Mac and its focus on its interface. We know that you might be a little curious, so I'm going to present some of the new cool features in version 6, explain what they do, why do they exist, when you might use them, and of course, where you can find them. But first of all, let's find out where to download. Go to rhino3d.com, click on download, and under the Mac section we'll find the two options. The link will also be on the description of this video. So, once we've downloaded and we have proceeded with the installation, let's go to validate our license. And at this point, we'll find a new option, Login. We now have a cloud-based license management system that allows you to log in into the cloud Zoo using your Rhino account. That means that you can access Rhino from anywhere in the world and that you no longer need to memorize your license key. It is a great option for individual students working at their university and at home and also for professionals that work remotely. So if you want more information regarding licensing options, I suggest visiting our YouTube channel and looking for a specific video about Rhino 6 for Mac licensing options. And the first thing to mention is that Rhino 6 for Mac takes advantage of macOS versions. And a good example of it is Mojave's dark mode. The dark mode was introduced by Apple last year, and it's a dark color scheme that works system-wide, including apps that come with your Mac, and that some software such as Rhino have adopted. If you have already upgraded to Mojave, you can go to the Apple icon, System Preferences, general, and choose the dark appearance. All panels, application toolbar, and menus will change to match the dark mode. For some users, the main benefit of this dramatic new look is reducing eye fatigue, but it also helps you focus on your work. Remember, you can always change it back by going to the Apple icon, System Preferences, General, and choosing the light appearance. So this was the dark mode and we wanted to make sure you could take advantage of it in Rhino. So I'll start presenting the top menu. Main changes on top menu include two new displayed modes, Kangaroo 2 and floating panels. So let's go to explore each one of them. Under tools, we'll find Grasshopper listed. And inside Grasshopper, we'll find Kangaroo 2. Kangaroo is a live physics engine for interactive simulation, form finding, optimization, and constraint solving. You no longer need to download from Food for Rhino, it now ships with Rhino 6 for Mac. So I'll close Grasshopper and continue with Top Menu. Under View, we'll find two new displayed modes Arctic and Ray Trace. Arctic is an ambient occlusion display that doesn't contain material information. And Ray Trace, on the other hand, is a path tracer for Rhino that adds real reflections and refractions to the viewport. But I'll explain them later. Let's continue with the top menu and go to Render to discover the option to open last rendering. And finally, under Window, Floating Panels a long list that was not included in version 5. So those were the main changes on top menu, and we hope that this new displayed modes and improvements made to the rendering interface change the way you experience rendering. Next, let's talk about the application toolbar. And as you can see, it hasn't changed, but it's good to mention that we have these two icons to hide the left sidebar and the right sidebar giving you more space in your viewports. If we click again, they will be shown. And at this point, I would like to open a new model and start explaining a little more about the new panels. Now, 
Now let's explore the right sidebar and let's start by talking about the new panels. These panels will help you access Rhino controls and edit settings in an easier way. They will also help you as we will see now when rendering. If we click on the gear, we'll have the list of panels display and the ones that are marked with a check, for example the first one, layers, is because it's open. If I click, the icon will disappear and to bring it back, I just need to click again. The first one I would like to mention is notifications. Notifications inform you of things that we consider necessary and that require some action. For example, uh, some pending update or information regarding my license. And that's why it's so important to always check notifications. The next one will be libraries. Libraries contain a set of folders and subfolders with ready-to-use materials and real-scale textures. If I go back to my render content, you'll see that this panel allows you to search for materials and also environments. And set that, the next one will be environments. Environments are lighting schemes for your scene that can be imported from the library and edit through this panel. You can change the background color, the image and the projection. And the next one on the list is ground plane. Ground plane will display an infinite plane below your model. If I turn off, I'll have a floating model. Turn back on to get that shadow and reflections back. You can also change the material and of course it renders much faster than any surface as a background. The next one is materials. Materials will display all the materials that I'm using in my scene. I can create new ones or import from the material library. Also, I can add tags words or description that will allow me to search for those materials inside the libraries. To assign a new material, you can drag and drop or you can select the object, click on the material and assign to an object. The Materials panel allows you to manage and edit all the materials in a single place. And that takes me to the last one, Snapshots. Snapshots is the new feature in Rhino 6. It allows you to save and restore states of the appearance of your model. And also animate them. To create an animation, you just need to click on this icon and search for the option. And that brings me to the second part, where we will talk about the Properties panel. And to access, you just need to click on an object, and you'll see the new icons display. Play with mesh modifiers such as thickening, shut linings, or decals. I will start by explaining thickening. If I turn on and I edit the value, you'll see the difference. It constructs a mesh offset based on the object's render mesh. And for rendering purposes, it can save you a long time. The next one will be shed linings. And for this one, I will go to a different object. And I will go to my layers to activate my curves and select the object. If I turn on, I'll be able to add my curve edit the value and select the profile. 
to generate a gap between two adjacent surfaces. As I mentioned before, for rendering purposes, it can save you a lot of time. And just to end, I will show you something new on decals. And since decals are textures that are placed directly on an object, I will restore this view. Select the object, activate the decal widget, and I suggest also to activate the gumball. I will select the decal widget and I'll be able to move, scale and rotate my image in an easy way. A second thing I want to mention is that if we go to edit this image, you can now apply color mask. And in this case, my image was like this. But after selecting the color, changing the tolerance and applying the color mask, I was able to get this effect. As you can see, it works great for placing logos, labels, signs, and much more. And you don't have to go through the complexity of texture mapping. So, as you can see, this mesh modifier, such as thickening and shut linings, adds small details without substantially increasing the Rhino file size. And that's a really important thing to mention. Finally, let's talk about the two new displayed modes. But first, I'll turn the decal widget off. So I'll go back to my icon and click again. Now, I'm ready to discover the two new displayed modes. So I'll click on the title of my viewport. And the first one is Arctic. Arctic, as I mentioned before, is an ambient occlusion display that doesn't contain the material information. As you can see, all objects and background will turn white. It also adds a soft shadow and works great for early stage presentations. I'll click again and find ray trace. But first, and just to compare rendered and ray trace, I'll change the view and I'll go to my materials panel. I'll add a cork material here and a transparent one. I'll go back to the title of my viewport and select Ray Traced. Ray Traced displayed mode sets the viewport to a render mode with cycles, a real-time ray tracer. It applies backdrop and lighting settings from the render properties. As you can see, it gives a more realistic look to shadows and reflections, along with a much improved translucency and scattering. You can edit the settings by going to Rhino, Preferences, Displayed Modes, and selecting Ray Traced. I'll go back to my preferences and show you the new ones, Advanced, Plugins and Render Libraries. Inside Advanced, you'll find the option to manage all Rhino preferences. Inside Plugins, the list of plugins you have installed and also the ones that do not ship with Rhino. You can load, enable and disable them from here. Render Libraries where you can find the location of your materials and environments and, of course, change it. Last but not least, remember you can change the theme to a Windows theme. It will activate the ribbon bar and change the interface to look more like the Windows one. Changes take effect after restart, so I'll close Rhino and open again. Ribbon bar will appear and with it the new inversion 6 tab, making it easier to find the new commands. 
This was the Windows theme, an option for Windows users new to Rhino 6 for Mac. And this brings us to the end of this fast tour through what's new in Rhino 6 for Mac. And if you want detailed information on any of the things I mentioned, please check the Rhino 6 for Mac videos that we'll be posting and visit our website. The link will also be on the description of this video. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to watch our new videos. So that was all. Thanks for watching and until the next one.